Valley's leading news program with meteorologist Cecily Tynan, Alicia Vitarelli, Shari Williams, and Rick Williams. Hurricane Helene is moving quickly through the Gulf of Mexico at this hour. It's currently a Category 3 storm and strengthening. It's expected to make landfall as a major hurricane in the Big Bend of Florida sometime this evening. And millions of people will feel the impact from this monster storm. Thursday night, the big story on Action News is Hurricane Helene closing in on Florida. The storm's impact is expected to stretch across several states. Helene is expected to make landfall in Florida tonight. It'll bring dangerous winds, flooding, and storm surges up to 20 feet. Millions of people are under mandatory evacuation orders. Well, the storm's far-reaching outer bands have already brought tropical force winds on shore, pushing water into the streets. Residents across the southeast will feel the residual effects from this massive storm. And we have live team coverage tonight. Meteorologist Cecily Tynan is tracking the impact. Right now, let's go to Action News reporter Charles Watson, live at Philadelphia International Airport, where travelers are already dealing with delays and cancellations, Charles. Uh, yeah, Rick and Shari, a lot of folks who were supposed to be on flights to destinations on Florida's West Coast were warned in advance of cancellations, so they weren't surprised if they showed up to the airport today. Others, namely Eagles fans, made adjustments to their itinerary so they can avoid Hurricane Helene altogether and make it to Tampa in time for the Eagles game on Sunday. Most of our fans are still excited to go. Nothing's too big for Bob Cavanaugh and dozens of other fans to skip out on the Birds' big showdown with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Not even a major hurricane threatening Florida's West Coast and the Panhandle. I think everything will be fine. Cavanaugh of Philly Sports Trip says he and more than 100 other Eagles fans were supposed to fly into Tampa this morning to kick off a big group trip to cheer on the Birds in their fourth game this season. But the threat of Hurricane Helene forced them to change course quickly. We found out around 4 o'clock yesterday that the Tampa International of our group to Orlando. That's where Kavanaugh says they'll stay for the night at least after he learned their hotel in Clearwater Beach was evacuated. He tells Action News at least 10 people canceled the trip in its entirety this morning in an effort to avoid any parts of Hurricane Helene. And for good cause, the powerful storm has forced nearly 1,200 flight cancellations at airports across the country, including about 30 here at Philadelphia International Airport, according to FlightAware. Even if it's okay here, Somewhere else, you know, flights can't get out to other places to get here. It could then impact your flight. They warned us of uh, some turbulence and it was a little bit bumpy. With remnants of the storm reaching up into Georgia and the Carolinas, folks like Beverly Cole, who's visiting the city for the weekend, says she's fortunate her flight from Charlotte made it off the ground. It was raining pretty hard and there was a tornado warning in the area, but they were still trying to get things moving. That woman says she'll be watching the track of Hurricane Helene throughout the weekend with hopes of avoiding, of avoiding delays from storm remnants. Meantime, officials here at PHL says the airport could be dealing with delays and cancellations for at least the next couple of days, so they recommend folks checking in with their airlines before heading out. For now, we're live at Philadelphia International Airport. Charles Watson, Channel 6, Action News, Rick and Shari. All, All right. right, always good news, okay? Uh, Charles, Charles, good advice there. Let's go now to meteorologist Cecily Tynan, who has been busy tracking Thank Helene you. in the weather center. Oh. And Cecily, we will feel some of Helene's effects this weekend, huh? Uh, yeah, we will. We will get some showers, but we are not going to get the full impact of the storm. Thank goodness, because Helene, it's getting bigger. It is getting stronger and it's moving faster. It is now a high end category three hurricane. Maximum stain winds up to 125 miles an hour. 130, it becomes a cat four. And the National Hurricane Center said there's a good chance Helene does make landfall as a category four hurricane. You can see with this tropical satellite image very closely that deep eye. So that's an indication the storm is intensifying. It has warm water, it has no dry air, no wind shear. So there's really nothing to stop the storm from further intensifying. Also a big problem with Helene, its size. It's almost 500 miles across. So you can see with the radar that the effects of the storm being felt not just across Florida, but Georgia, South Carolina, even into North Carolina and Virginia. And then the east side of that storm, that's where you have those red boxes. Those are tornado watch boxes. So they're already getting some violent weather, even though the storm is 175 miles south of Tallahassee. So this is the latest from the National Hurricane Center. 
Center. It's booking. It's moving north northeast at 23 miles an hour. It likely will be making landfall around the big end area of Florida between about 10 o'clock and midnight tonight. And notice this as it moves inland. 2 o'clock in the morning, it's still a Category 2 hurricane over Georgia, and then gradually it'll start to weaken, but the problem, it's moving so quickly, it will maintain hurricane status well through Georgia, probably a tropical storm through Atlanta, and then it starts to make a little bit of a hook towards the Tennessee Valley, bringing potentially flooding rain. Now, the wind shows, future tracker, those wind gusts, Cedar Key tonight around 10 o'clock, 120 miles an hour, those winds pushing water inland, so that storm surge, 10 to 20 feet and the potential for historic flooding. Now this system will bring us some showers over the weekend. I'll talk more about the timing of that coming up in the full AccuWeather forecast. Shari. Okay, Cecily, thank you. And be sure to keep that 6 ABC app close by to get the latest updates on Hurricane Helene as it approaches Florida's Gulf Coast. You will find hourly updates on the storm strength and also the path along with how it could impact our area later this weekend. All right, now to the investigation into a home invasion that turned into a shooting in Abington, Montgomery County. Police say a man forced his way into a home, but he did not realize a man was upstairs with a gun. Action News reporter Sharifa Jackson live at Abington Police Headquarters with the details, and Sharifa, police have released new body cam video tonight as well. Yeah, that's right, Rick. That video, it shows the tense moments as officers arrive to the scene. They begin to investigate what happened just minutes earlier. Shots were fired, but police say in this case, it ended well for the good guys. What you're seeing in this Abington police body cam video. Everybody put your hands up. Let me see your hands. Are two officers. Where's the guy at? Responding to a violent home invasion turned shooting on the 1800 block of Horse Avenue. Police say this happened Monday around 1 a.m. when this man, 26 year old Kabir Shepard, followed a woman home from a casino. He then forced his way inside her home with a gun, pushed her to the ground, and grabbed her purse. Investigators say at that point, all the victim could do was scream. The homeowner's son had the presence of mind to wake up somehow uh, be able to retrieve his legally owned gun and take action by shooting the, the suspect in the, in the arm and the back. Police responded quickly and were able to take Shepard into custody while neighbors like Philip Diamore made their way outside. The gunshot woke us up and woke my daughter up too. She's only nine. Phillips says the street was lined with officers. He watched as they wheeled the suspect away. I'm glad the people around here are ready to protect their neighborhood and they see something bad happen, they're ready to get on it. Abington Police Chief Patrick Malloy says this case highlights the need for everyone to always be aware of your surroundings. Officer, I'm dying. Please help. But he says what the victim's son did was truly heroic. He shot him j j twice until he was no longer a threat. So he showed a lot of poise and skill, and he very much likely saved his mother's life or saved her from being seriously injured. Yeah, and the suspect, he is okay. He was taken to the hospital where he is treated. He's currently in the Montgomery County Correctional Facility, facing a number of charges, including robbery, aggravated assault. He was arraigned, and he's being held on a $250,000 cash bail. We're live from Abington Police, Sharifa Jackson, Channel 6, Action News. Rick. All right, Sharifa, thank you. A man faces charges tonight for allegedly trying to strike two Philadelphia police officers with his car over the weekend. The Philadelphia District Attorney's Office announced the arrest of 25-year-old Deontay Vincent. Investigators say the incident happened as officers arrived to break up a car meetup overnight Saturday into Sunday. Hundreds of people and dozens of cars were involved in spinouts at 11 major intersections across the city. Vincent is being held on $1.3 million bail. A group of Philadelphia City Council members, housing advocates, and renters took part in a day of action this today outside of City Hall. It was part of a national movement calling on lawmakers to make housing more available and more affordable. City Council member Nicholas O'Rourke introduced a bill this morning that, if passed, would ban the practice of rental price fixing in Philadelphia. This practice happens when competitors in the rental housing market agree to set or maintain prices. Well, today is a big day for us here at Channel 6. We are broadcasting from our brand new state-of-the-art studio. Yes, we are loving it. It's been in the works for more than a year, and we are thrilled for you to experience it right here with us.
The space is bigger, better, and bolder. It allows us to showcase our storytelling in new ways that will also improve the viewing experience for you at home. Absolutely, and over the coming days, we will continue to show you more of this impressive space. We hope you love it as much as we do. I'm going to live here. <laughs> I know. Let's start just coming here every day. <laughs> it's big enough. Still to come on Action News tonight, UPS is set to hire thousands of workers for the holiday season. Plus, New York City Mayor Eric Adams is indicted on serious charges. We're following the latest developments. Also new research is out this evening on people who only work out on the weekends. We'll break down the details in Health Check when Action News continues tonight. Action News Traffic is sponsored by Duncan. Introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunrise. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. The mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, was formally charged today with accepting improper campaign contributions. Adams was indicted on five federal counts of bribery, wire fraud, and solicitation of illegal foreign campaign donations. The 57-page indictment accuses Adams of receiving free rooms at luxury hotels and free meals at high-end restaurants. Prosecutors say it all began when he was a top elected official in Brooklyn and continued after he became mayor. Adams said today that he looks forward to defending himself. If convicted, he could face significant prison time. The House Task Force investigating the assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, held its first hearing today. Local and federal officials testified about the shooting back on July 13th when Trump was grazed by a bullet and one rally goer was killed. The hearing comes the day after a bipartisan committee in the Senate released a report highlighting key failures by the Secret Service that day. A tenth death has now been linked to the Boar's Head Deli meat recall. The CDC says the latest victim is from New York. A listeria outbreak was first linked to the company back in July and impacts liverwurst, sausage, ham, and bologna products. At least 59 people in 19 states have been sickened, including in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. All right, Thursday night, let's get a check of the highways and byways in our Action News traffic report now. Let's check in with Jessica Boyington getting used to her new home as well in the Action News traffic center. Hi, Jess. Hey, Jess. Hi, Rick and Shari. And hey, everybody, heading out the door right now in Hatfield, we have remnants of an accident scene on the southbound side. So it actually just looks like we have police presence left over. I don't really see anything else happening there, but definitely still a tap on the brakes for everybody to head down that southbound side right around Hilltown Pike. So watch for that. Heading over to New Jersey, a few things happening there, and most of them are happening on Route 130. So right now, uh, we have an overturned vehicle out in Burlington on 130 southbound side near 413. We have two left lanes blocked there for right now. Traffic getting by slowly. Also, two left lanes blocked moving through Collingswood, and it's actually showing delays in both directions. So, Route 130 southbound side, right near the White Horse Pike. That's just an earlier crash. Been there for a little bit now, but still seeing delays again on the southbound side and the northbound side as well. And take a look down here. This is actually heading from 676 uh, into 76 down to the 42 freeway and 11 miles per hour approaching the scene there. Once you get towards the 42 freeway and 295, it still continues to look like this. Now, a second ago on the southbound side, I actually saw some flashing lights head that direction. I'm not hearing of any accidents reported down that southbound side yet, but just a heads up, we could be seeing a little bit more of a delay there if any of that sticks and some rain on the Schuylkill Expressway to end your commute. Rick and Shari, back over to you. All right, Jess, we'll check uh, again at 530. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> the Independence Blue Cross Foundation launched a new initiative today to support the mental health of Philadelphia students. At an event in Spring Garden, the foundation announced it's dramatically expanding these essential services with help from Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Healthcare professionals, educators, and policymakers were all invited there to discuss the mental health crisis impacting children and the best ways to address it. Health Check at 5 tonight. So called weekend warriors, or people who only exercise on Saturdays and Sundays, are still getting significant health benefits. That's according to a new study of nearly 90,000 people in the UK. The researchers found that those who fit a week's worth of exercise into one or two days had a lower risk of developing more than 200 diseases compared with inactive people. 
The researchers say the total amount of exercise people get is more important than how frequently they train. Good to know. Mm -hmm. A partnership was underway today in Old City to offer free health services to senior citizens. Walmart pharmacists joined the nonprofit Human Good at Riverside Presbyterian Apartments. Now, inside this blue wellness tra trailer, health professionals offered blood pressure and BMI screenings, consultations, and vaccinations. The goal is to offer free care at nine senior communities across our region this week. Health Check is sponsored by Independence Blue Cross. Learn more at ibx.com. UPS says it will be hiring 125,000 employees to handle deliveries this holiday season. The package delivery company says most of the positions don't even require an interview and applicants can get an offer in 10 minutes. UPS is looking for delivery drivers and package handlers. The openings are available throughout the country. Now to a warning about package thieves. Police say crooks are now tracking delivery information. The latest incidents have involved the thefts of the new iPhone 16. Doorbell camera video shows a thief taking one right off the porch of a home in the New York suburbs last week. The thieves are striking right after the deliveries are actually made. Police are now trying to determine if customers shipping information has been leaked. Poster stamps are about to cost you even more. The United States Postal Service says it plans to raise stamp prices five times over the next three years. First class postage is currently 73 cents. USPS says stamps will remain at that price until the first price hike this coming July. The increases will then repeat each January and July until the end of 2027. No word yet on how much the price hikes will be. Catholics from across New Jersey gathered for a service here in Trenton today ahead of the state's March for Life. Worshippers joined together in prayer at St. Mary of the Assumption Cathedral. Twelve bishops from all over the Garden State participated in the service. It was followed by a one-mile march through the city. All right, time now for a check of the Accu the forecast. Some areas are seeing a little bit of rain right now. Yeah, actually. meteorologist Cecily Tynan is standing by with more for us, and we've been talking about the need for rain, Cecily. Yeah, and, and showering, Rick, thank goodness that we do have some showers around out there. Storm Tracker 6 live double scan showing that they are isolated right now. Not everyone's getting them. We've got some showers moving through Lancaster County, across Newcastle County. The main batch I'm watching is moving out of northeast Philadelphia, Montgomery County, into Bucks County, and there are some pretty heavy downpours associated with this. Of course, this is good news heading towards Abington uh, because we do desperately need the rain. And it's kind of nice that I get to talk about some rainfall totals. Pottstown reporting 0.39. Phoenixville, 0.21. Spring City, close to three quarters of an inch of rain. Coatesville, King of Prussia, and Westchester, all around a half inch of rain. We need the rain, so it's nice that we're finally getting some rain. Also, a few peaks of sunshine and temperatures a lot warmer than yesterday. Yesterday's high, 69. Right now, Philadelphia at 80 degrees. We hit 81 degrees earlier today. Allentown, 73. Exton, 73. And Millville, right now, 76 degrees. Also, what's noticeable, the humidity. Dew points up to 60. 69 degrees, so we are on the verge of that oppressive 70 degree dew point. And this is all thanks to that tropical fetch that's coming from Hurricane Helene. So we're actually getting affected by the storm with the high dew points, with the clouds. And satellite and radar showing that center of the storm right there, 175 miles south of Tallahassee, moving north northeast at 23 miles an hour. But this plume of moisture it has already brought up to a foot of rain to parts of the mountains of Georgia. Uh, there's some tornado watch boxes, and that system likely will be making landfall around the Big Bend of Florida sometime later tonight, probably between about 10 o'clock and midnight. As far as tomorrow, it's going to be very humid again, not quite as warm as today, with a high of 77 degrees, and we are allowing for some scattered showers. Future trackers showing there could be a little bit of activity, mainly light in the morning, kind of focused across South Jersey and Delaware. And the main activity will be on Friday night. This is when we actually get some 
some of the outer rain bands from Helene into early Saturday morning. This shows some heavy downpours across parts of New Jersey in the wee hours of the morning on Saturday. So the weekend, it's not going to be a washout. Tomorrow, cloudy, humid, some scattered showers. The heaviest will be tomorrow night. And for the weekend, we keep the clouds. We'll get a few breaks of sunshine, mainly dry for the weekend, but both days we could get a spotty shower. But I wouldn't cancel any outdoor plans for the weekend. Certainly, it's not going to be a washout. So the exclusive AccuWeather 7-day forecast for your Friday. We've got some clouds, some scattered showers. The steadiest rain will be Friday night. 77 degrees for the high for the weekend. A morning shower possible on Saturday. Then cloudy, 77 degrees. Sunday, cloudy with an isolated shower. Monday, mostly cloudy, 72 degrees. And we keep the clouds and we bring in a period of rain on Tuesday with a high of 70. More clouds, maybe a shower on Wednesday. But Thursday, finally, oh! Sunshine's going to be here. It's going to take a full week. I don't want to complain. We really do desperately need the rain, guys. Did you yeah. just? Did you just? Sing? Oh, sunshine! It'll sunshine. be like, wow, what is that? Okay, <laughs> a gotcha. big ball in the sky. That's right. It's a dreary day ahead. <laughs> okay. You like studio, my <laughs> studio makes you sound better. Sound I know it kind of echoes. Still the governor. <laughs> next half hour of action news at five thirty. We'll be right back here at okay. five. <laughs> action news. Delaware Valley's leading news program now continues. Hello again, Thursday night, 5.30. Here's what's happening on Action News this half hour now. More controversy surrounding the plan to build the 76ers' new home in Center City. Activists gathered outside of City Hall today to express their concerns. Also an update on the Idaho College murders case. Accused killer Brian Koberger appears before a new judge in a new location. And in the dish tonight, a local restaurant is serving up vegetarian and vegan food. Alicia Vitarelli is here with more on her visit to veg. Now the details here at 530. Members of the LGBT community are the latest to speak out against a proposed new arena for the 76ers in Center City. They say the projects will create negative impacts on the neighborhood, which is nearby. Action News reporter Taronda Thomas looking into the story for she has more on this new opposition and Taronda we've of course know that there's been another group in the city that's already been speaking out about this for months. Yeah, that's right, Shari. Ever since 76ers Place was proposed, we've heard from residents of Chinatown who say its proximity to their neighborhood would be detrimental. Well, now residents in the neighborhood are saying the same thing. You're turning Center City into a place no one wants to be or can even afford to be. Another community adding their voices in opposition to the proposed 76ers Place. Members of the LGBTQ plus community petitioning City Council to oppose the project. We are claiming space in the neighborhood. We do not want to be pushed out again. Worry that the project's proximity to the neighborhood will create gentrification, make the area unaffordable, and take away queer and safe spaces. An arena made by and for billionaires won't be economic catalyst for community and people that live here, but just serves to further enrich them in an attempt to further divide us. Mayor Sherelle Parker struck a deal with the Sixers last week, officially announcing the proposal in a community meeting last night. But it's up to First District Council Member Mark Squilla to introduce the legislation. And right now, he says he hasn't decided if he will. There's challenges still that we see, but I think there's also opportunity. And I think we need to look at that for um, both the city as a whole and the surrounding communities that will be impacted by it. There's now a 30-day comment period on the issue. If Squilla does introduce a resolution for 76ers Place, the earliest he could do so would be October 24th. And hopefully we'll come to some level of resolve, but also you have also 16 other members of city council will also be weighing in on this process. Already weighing in, two neighborhoods worried how a new arena will impact them. If this resolution is introduced on October 24th, it would still have to go through public hearings. Now, one thing Council Member Squilla says he will not go along with is the proposal to build housing on top of 76ers Place. He says to residents in Chinatown, that just seems like insult to injury. At City Hall, Toronto Thomas, Channel 6 Action News. Shari? All right. Uh, they're making their voices heard for sure on this matter. Toronto, thanks. The suspect in the Idaho College murders appeared in court today for the first time since his case was moved to a new location.
Poconos native Brian Koberger was called before a judge in Boise for a pretrial hearing. The judge allowed him to wear civilian clothes today instead of his inmate orange jumpsuit. His defense team successfully argued for a change of venue over concerns about jury impartiality in Moscow, Idaho. The judge will need to now assess the defense's newest argument in favor of having the death penalty thrown out. A trial date has also not yet been set. Well, back here, fire has damaged a popular playground in Delaware, closing it indefinitely. Happened Monday night at Brookhaven Park in Newark. Investigators say the flames caused structural damage to the equipment, making it unsafe for play. Some of the plastic melted from the heat. Police are calling the fire suspicious in nature and are asking anyone with information to contact them immediately. State leaders and advocates celebrated the recent signing today of new legislation to protect child victims and witnesses in Pennsylvania. Action News was at Casa Youth Advocates and Media as lawmakers touted the passing of Act 23. The law calls for more protections for young victims of child abuse and for witnesses. Officials also discuss the next steps to further expand protections for children. 20 years ago, nearly a young, attractive, and well-educated Philadelphia couple captivated our area and garnered international headlines for their brazen crimes. Our investigative team has now produced a true crime documentary of the infamous duo. Investigative reporter Tra Chad Perdelli now with a preview. Our documentary is called Beauty and the Cheat. It's streaming exclusively on Hulu. It's about a couple who went on a sophisticated theft operation, all to live the good life. Police are calling this pair a modern-day Bonnie and Clyde. Jocelyn Kirsch and Edward Anderton splashed their social media accounts with their ill-gotten gains. Lavish trips, extravagant dinners, and other images befitting high society. No one at that condo complex in Center City wants those two back living there again. Two friends, the Drexel student and Penn graduate, seem to have it all. But it was all funded with stolen riches. People liking to romanticize an attractive young couple who had everything going for them and decided to engage in this life of crime. The documentary goes inside the investigation to learn more about the brazen scheme. The damage was, for most people, was not financial. It was emotional. Investigators reveal new details about the couple and hear from the woman who helped police bring them down. I was vulnerable that she stole from me, and I wanted payback. And a former lover of Jocelyn Kirsch speaks. It just was really hard to discern uh, sort of what was lies and what wasn't. They were smart. They were, they were actually very good criminals uh, and uh, were very successful for over a year. The Anderton sentencing would seem to end this tale except for the TV movie that will undoubtedly be made. The true crime documentary, Beauty and the Cheat, is now streaming on Hulu. I'm investigative reporter Chad Perdelli, Channel 6, Action News. Cradles to Crayons Philadelphia was busy distributing 750,000 diapers today. Volunteers with the nonprofit have been working hard at the Giving Factory East Falls to achieve this goal. This week is National Diaper Awareness Week. The nonprofit says three out of five children in Philadelphia lack the clothing and essentials they need to thrive. Time now to get one more check of how the traffic is moving. All right, back to go to Jessica Boyington in the Action News Traffic Center with the very latest. Hey, Joss. Hi, Rick and Shari, and hey, everyone. Still watching Route 309 now from an earlier crash here on the southbound side just in Hatfield right around Hilltown Pike. That accident has cleared, but now what's happening is it's construction. Uh, that's what I, th I thought it was actually going to clear a couple of minutes ago, but now I'm hearing there is manhole repairs happening on this southbound side. That's why we're losing that right-hand shoulder. If you're out the door on Route 130 and moving around Collingswood or at least trying to. Southbound right around the White Horse Pike still seeing two lanes blocked with an earlier crash. So that's causing delays heading out of Philadelphia and all towards that area. Uh, case in point, here's our Ben Franklin Bridge camera kind of spun around onto the Admiral Wilson Boulevard, that area. So we're seeing uh, big delays heading in that direction there out of Philly. And that's probably related is what we're thinking. Out in Souderton, watch on County Line Road and Central Avenue for a crash. And the Schuylkill Expressway, we're like jam solid right around Conshohocken in both directions. You can see a little rain coming down there as well so wet drive and a busy one with lots of delays as well rick and shari back over to you guys all right jess thank you again
Still to come here on Action News tonight, this is Rogers has the latest on the Eagles as they prepare for the Buccaneers. Also, a new grocery store is officially open in Bucks County. We'll tell you what makes it unique. Alicia. In today's The Dish, we're taking you to the upscale vegan mainstay veg in Center City, how they're sticking to their roots while also continuing to shake up the veggie forward culinary scene. Oh, we've got cocktails too, Adam. I, I was going to say, <laughs> you, need yeah. a, you need a drink on the side because we had some finally from Mother Nature. The clouds, they are going to linger through much, not only of the weekend, but that seven day forecast, more showers on and off through the weekend and the very latest on the major hurricane, Helene, heading towards Florida when we come right back. Action News Traffic is sponsored by Duncan. Introducing Sparked Energy by Duncan. Available in two full-on delicious flavors, Berry Burst and Peach Sunrise. Drop by or order ahead on the Duncan app. A new Amazon Fresh grocery store opened today in Bucks County. The store in Oxford Valley is the fourth Amazon Fresh store in Pennsylvania. Amazon says it's an affordable grocery store that offers a wide selection of quality groceries. The company says the store is supporting the community by donating surplus food to the Phil Abundance Food Bank. The city of Philadelphia honored one of its brightest stars today during a special ceremony at City Hall. City Council helped commemorate the 40-year career of Emmy-nominated actress and activist Erica Alexander. Alexander received a special citation and a resolution in her honor. Her journey in the spotlight, it began at Philadelphia's Freedom Theater when she was only 14 years old. Congrats to her today. Mm, absolutely. Time now for sports and the Eagles are getting ready to face an old nemesis this weekend. Yeah, let's see how it turns out. This is Rogers standing by and they've got a little storm brewing down there too. Mm, they do. And this Bucks game is just three days away and the Eagles do not appear to be getting any healthier. For the second straight day, three key players showed up on the injury report as DNP did not participate. Lane Johnson and Devontae Smith are in concussion protocol, and A.J. Brown still has that hamstring issue. Jalen Hurts and the Birds are coming off that win in New Orleans. From an offensive standpoint, it was not pretty, but the team says it's learned from it. It helped build confidence, helped build the togetherness, um, helped build a, a nice foundation that we can rely on each other, uh, play complimentary football, and you know, I think the, the best takeaways from that game is how we continue to show up for each other. The Phillies have the night off. Tomorrow they'll visit the Nats. Last night the Phillies locked up at least the two seed in the National League. This is a special team. Manager Rob Thompson can feel it. Anything can happen in the playoffs, but this is a really good team. This is the best team we've had since I've been here. Um, I think there's, there's great balance as far as our offense is good. Um, when we don't chase, when we get the ball, you know, swing at strikes and use the entire field, our off offense is really good. Our rotation obviously is good, and, and we've got an extremely deep bullpen. So, you know, I really love this club, I really do, and they're tough and resilient, and they, they prepare and they compete every day, and um, I trust them. The Flyers will host the Islanders tonight in preseason play. Rookie Matvey Mishkov will make his home debut. He's been as good as advertised. Meanwhile, veteran Travis Konechny has seen the other area sports teams do well. He wants some of that shine. I've been following the baseball every, you know, for the last few years. So, you know, when you see the buzz around the team and, you know, I was here when the Eagles won too. So, you know, you want to get back to that and, and be that team that is involved in that and, you know, have the other sports teams watching us. You know, that's, that's the key is, is you want to be the team in the playoffs and have the buzz around the city. Yeah, they want some of that excitement that's been surrounding both the Eagles and the Phillies lately. Yeah, let's hope All it rubs right. off for yeah. sure. Thank you, Deuces. Much more still ahead on Action News tonight. Your exclusive Acura the Forecast coming up. Let's take a live look right now. Outside through our Sky 6 camera, the view across Philadelphia International Airport. Plenty of clouds hanging around. Some of us getting some rain right now. Meteorologist Adam Joseph with more and the details when we come back. Action News Sports is sponsored by Hyundai. With the brand new Hyundai, there is joy in every journey. The Brandywine Valley SPCA is hoping to clear out its cages by cutting adoption fees. In fact, it will let you name your price. All adult dogs one year or older are eligible to be adopted through this promotion. This special pick your fee event is an 
effect through this Sunday at all Brandywine Valley SPCA locations. So, right. great time to get a pet. Yeah, it's a good deal. <laughs> all Let's right. now talk about that AccuWeather forecast. All right, meteorologist Adam Joseph standing by in the weather center, looking good over there, Adam. And you're going to start with the latest on the hurricane, right? Yeah, it's a very strong, dangerous Category 3 hurricane. Wind sustained 125 miles an hour due west of Tampa. And clearly see that eye is really forming in the last couple of hours here. So it continues to strengthen and expected to make landfall close to midnight in the big bend of Florida as a weak category four hurricane. And because it's moving so fast on that east side, it brings up the sea level. And as it rushes inland, it pushes all that wall of water. So the storm surge in the big bend is going to be between one and two stories high. That's 15 to 20 feet of salt water being pushed inland. In addition, on the eastern side from South Carolina, southern Georgia, all of Florida tornado watch boxes here because you have that counterclockwise flow around the storm and that adds extra spin in the atmosphere and that rain is being pushed up all the way into West Virginia. The rain we have today, not from Helene, but because of a southeasterly wind. The heavy rain threat, the increased scale here, the purple is the highest end and that is going to extend from the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina, South Carolina, going into Georgia. 15 to 20 inches of rain landslides. There'll be catastrophic flooding and that will extend all the way down to Panama City and mentioning with that storm surge of 15 to 20 feet, they're classifying it as unsurvivable. So very dangerous down there tonight at home. Nothing more than a couple of showers in lower parts of Montgomery County, right along the Pennsylvania Turnpike into Bucks County. Also a few showers near our Lancaster radar in southern Lancaster County. But this was a solid area in Delaware County and Chester County, but notice it is weakening as it's lifting to the north and east. Despite any sunshine today, it was a warm, humid one. 80 degrees, your temperature right now, but that dew point near 70, it feels more like 83 degrees. A very summer feel out there at this hour. And the forecast lows, mid 60s north and west, upper 60s from Delaware Valley down to the shore. A very muggy night and nothing more than a scattered shower around. High pressure whisks its way into northern New England. Nothing more than a scattered shower at times tomorrow. Cloudy and humid 77. The remnant low with all of the Heavy rain from Helene stays way to our south and west, being pushed into the Tennessee Valley. That's where it stays as we go into the weekend. We see a spotty shower both Saturday and Sunday with lots of clouds, not a washout. And it's because of that wind coming in off the water with a trailing cold front just to our east. So what to expect with cloud cover? Sad to say, I'm sorry I have to show this to you, but basically fully cloudy skies, maybe a little brightening here or there. But that goes right through Tuesday and even Wednesday into next week. 77 the next two days on the exclusive Acu of the 70 forecast with those cloudy skies. Tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, nothing more than an isolated shower around. Monday, mostly cloudy, 72 degrees. And then another low comes through on Tuesday with periods of rain. Wednesday, limited sun, 72. And finally, we're going to catch some sunshine here as we go into Thursday of next week. And again, it's going to be a week from now that we see some sunshine come back here but we said we've needed the rain yeah now people may say <laughs> we need the sunshine right. <laughs> now we need the sunshine back this is All true right. you like you love in the studio love it yeah get a lot of steps in back there yeah you look great over there Thanks, you good too. stuff thank you Adam. you look all right <laughs> the camden city school district held its second annual grandparents bingo luncheon today action news was there with students and staff from four schools came together with their grandparents here at camden high's campus well they enjoyed a delicious lunch and played a few rounds of bingo it was all to honor the grandparents in the community for their unwavering support and love well deserved. Mm -hmm. All right, in today's The Dish, we're getting back in the kitchen with the culinary couple behind the world-renowned Center City Eatery, Veg. After 13 years of bringing upscale vegan cuisine to the city, they've now expanded out to the burbs. Our Alicia Vitarelli here with us in studio with more. Hi, Alicia. Hey, guys. You know, when I first met Rich Landau and Kate Jacoby, 13 years ago, Veg was sort of groundbreaking. They tell me they're so thrilled to see other vegan eateries popping up everywhere. Take a look. 
you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, you could not get a vegetarian meal, a decent one in Philadelphia. And um, it wasn't just that we wanted to serve a need or, or fill a void down here. We wanted to be an influence. In 2011, chef couple Rich Landau and Kate Jacoby changed the game with Veg, an upscale vegan mainstay on Locust Street. It's so accepted now. It's such the norm. When we first started this, and this goes way back before even Veg, there's so many explanations and even apologies about what they're not getting on the plate. We really had to explain ourselves. It was a lot of work. Now we're the cool kids. Last year, they expanded into the suburbs with the farm-to-table ground provisions in Westchester. It's adorable. We have a beautiful front porch. We've got a little sort of country market and then this tiny little dining room with a little four-seat bar in the back, totally open kitchen. We throw a little dinner party every night, and it's been so much fun. Veg already has a cookbook, and this fall, they're taking us to cocktail class. Veg. sort of chatted with the bar team and uh, co-authored a book that's going to be out this November. So it is a seasonal guide to bringing sort of veg style drinks and snacks to your home entertaining. We gave one of the autumnal offerings a whirl. And the name of this just screams fall, which is the fig leaf bourbon sour. Beautiful. Ooh, this is good. And now everyone's paying attention. So they shared the recipe for that fig leaf bourbon sour with us. It's so good. And guess what? We're also making their pumpkin bread. It's one of their staff favorites. Guys, they call it a sexy pumpkin bread. You're going to have to go to 6abc.com slash the dish to find out why. Oh, oh yeah. So that drink was pretty sexy too, <laughs> actually. Good. So listen, you know what? They put veggies in the spotlight and they, they said they were the cool kids mm -hmm. there. Making so veggies cool. All right. Yeah. All right, Alicia, yeah. thanks. Thanks, Alicia. Still ahead on action. Joy for kids with action news continues. Post captioning is sponsored by Lynn the Plumber Heating and Air. The only way Finally at five, a new playground designed by children and for children is now open in Philadelphia's Powellton neighborhood. The finance company Fannie Mae and nonprofit Kaboom held a ribbon cutting this afternoon at Wonder Spring Powellton Village on Warren Street. Workers at the Early Education Center finished putting the play area together piece by piece this morning. Kaboom allows children to take part in the design phase of the new playground. That's cool. They then get to see their creative ideas come to life. How about that? Yeah. Well, that's it for us at 5 here in our new studio. Right now, Brian Taft standing by for Action News at 6. Now for meteorologist Adam Joseph, Cecily Tyne, and Deuces Rogers, Alicia Vitarelli, Shari Williams, the entire Action News team. I'm Rick Williams. Thanks for joining us. Have a nice evening, and we'll see you later tonight.